Good morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to cover the latest build that I had. Uh, I said I'd cover some two points on it that I feel like I, I got right um, and really nailed. So you guys can learn. This is how I learned watching videos, watching, uh, reading a couple things, uh, and then mostly playing around. Um, there's lots of failures before successes. Um, this is the latest one. This is a plum. I think a lot of people call that a peeler, maybe a reverse pattern, mm. but, uh, yeah, the handle came out fantastic. I'm really proud of this one. The grain was, I think I covered in an earlier video. Look at that. Boom. So it's particularly the swell and the bluing on this one went exceptionally well. And I wanted to cover those things, especially the bluing. Bluing's always been a battle for me um, with getting it dark enough, consistent enough. Uh, I still don't know if I've mastered that, but I'll just share what I did on this particular project. It actually came out really cool because I started originally with a brush, um, but then, so, but I left that too. So it has this really cool texture underneath, um, I think, and uh, came together as a really nice package. Um, so first up, the swell, something I've done now with a Fawn's foot um, that maybe I didn't understand quite or just playing around. I mean, palm swells are fun to make. That's really, uh, I mean, it's it gives somebody that initial feel for like, all right, how am I going to use this tool? Um, so it, it's something I spent a lot of time with. There's a ton of feels. There's a ton of me sitting around in the shop kind of swinging, just kind of feeling, all right, have I got it right? One thing I changed a bunch. And I actually uh, got a drawing here just as a visual aid. Then I'll bring the handle itself up. Of course, I don't want to miss the fall. All right, there. So my fun drawings again. I think you guys saw them earlier. And um, so two axes. Let's say this is a lot of how I initially used to do it. So you got your bend in your lower handle. Um, so we got your throat and your bend to your swell. A lot of times I would start a taper right there. And what I found on this latest one was to keep that thin sometimes even even tapered itself to continue and then we go out uh with it so if you notice grab my handle again and this is just for you to try and play with so if you notice this is i think i said earlier this is about a 22 mil um i don't like going much thinner than that it just doesn't feel right to me everyone's got different size hands and it's easier to leave material that somebody can always thin down if they want uh, than it is to put material back because uh, you can't do it. But so here we have kept this taper. This is the bend right here and kept that until the, until the end. And then bam, and that, man, that is just sitting right in the handle or in the grip for me, uh, just like I like. I mean, that... If, it just feels great. The next thing was the uh, bluing. So initially, and this is for, you know, especially for customers that are sending stuff to me or uh, has initiated a project and, you know, you have something in mind, it's best to let me have the freedom uh, to move around with it in case I find something that I like better or I think the vision's better. This, you know, a couple things. This initially was gonna be a burnt handle and as I was uh, building it, and as I was about to you know, burn it, I, I talked to the customer, I was like, look, this is gonna look way better stained, or not stained, but uh, with just boiled linseed oil. You know, initially I was gonna um, just do a brushed um, finish, which I'm still working with brushed, you know, comment below or, you know, send me uh, email, whatever, if you got a great brush technique, because I'm still trying to learn that. Um, I've, I've got it down a couple times, but this time it just eluded me. But uh, so I started with a, I think it was like a 36 or a 40 grit belt. Um, and then I was gonna take it to a, a resurfacing belt uh, to it, just to kind of push it down and fog it up a little bit. Well, it just wasn't coming by and I tried a couple different grits. I tried uh, 120 grit. I also tried um, 
uh, Scotch Bright, and it just wasn't it wasn't getting the effect I wanted. And I was like, well, you know, I had the blue in around, and uh, but I've had mixed results. The times I've done okay was when I had uh, treated the the surface of the metal uh, a little bit with uh, whether it's sandpaper or or, or uh, the Scotch Bright uh, like Scotch Bright pads uh, before. So I said, heck, well, let's just try and see how it works. And it took right away. I mean, this is two coats. This is dark. I mean, I know it's tough with lighting and stuff to kind of see, but this is pretty, pretty consistent. And if you see, it's left that that pattern underneath. Um, so it has this, this great texture on there. Um, so to repeat it, um, what I did is... Um, so 40 grit just to get uh, your initial surfacing. Then I kind of buffed it out essentially with a resurfacing pad. Um, uh, then wiped it all down with alcohol. Uh, and then I applied the bluing uh, with uh, Casey's, um, I think it's super blue. I think that's what I'm using. Uh, with a uh, triple lot, um, why, why is it escaping me right now? Um, steel wool, steel wool. And I just kept on working that in the whole time. Flip it, pour a little more, work it, work it in. And then, of course, for the edge, you know, you're just going back over um, on one of your finer belts to, uh, to kind of clean up that edge. But, like I said, that has come out good. And I remember when I was first starting, I was, I'd was i ask people like, oh, how do you blue? And, you know, like you know, different makers. You know, there's a lot of super friendly people out there. But um, I probably followed some of the major ones at first. And, um, you know, some are friendly and some are busy. Lots of people are busy. Um, so I get that and you, you get responses sometimes. Um, I try and get back to everybody, but maybe, you know, I'm probably guilty of some of the same stuff. But... Um, yeah, those are the two things I wanted to cover, mostly for people that are making stuff, uh, especially that are new, like me, uh, that are making stuff and, and, and are trying to learn some of these finer techniques that I think um, uh, are not maybe not as obvious uh, when you're beginning. A lot of this stuff, you know, like the Fawn's Foot, for folks that have been making a while, it's probably old information. They're like, oh, God, why is this guy just figuring this out? But um yeah, I want to pass pass that along. You know, different different. You know, I'm not gonna. Uh, you wouldn't do that with every kind of palm swell. You know, like, you know, like a miner's axe. Maybe I wouldn't do that with like, uh, you know, for like a rafter. Um, not necessarily the same kind of taper there. Uh, I got a work in progress right now with a uh, boom, just a little French curve. I'm not gonna do that one quite the same way either. Uh, but with that kind of thin, traditional uh, fawn's foot, I think uh, you can get a good a good win there by just just delaying that taper past the curve a little bit and really um, focus on that. Versus you know you get to that curve and a lot of times it's tricky because a lot of times if you're if you're making a handle you're having this block there for for setting the head and you know it's tough to get that angle or to extend that flat so far down. Um, it's just a little extra work. Um, so don't focus so much on the taper as staying thin to the curve and then, then get out your taper. And, um, yeah, I think that covers it. Uh, what else? I think that's it guys. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this covers it. And again, boom, look at these angles. Wow. Pretty happy about that. Pretty happy about that. I don't know if I got good pictures of that on the Instagram, but I left it kind of just polished on the top because it had these kind of nice, um, nice marks there. So all that was good, but boom, good luck. Try it out, play with it. I mean, m most of the time, all this stuff is just discovery of just, you know, trying different things and, and just playing, playing with the, uh, playing with the same theme yourself and figuring out what works. Um, there is no one right way to do things, but um, there's. I think there, there are best practices. Or I think there are cleaner ways to do it. 
every Fawn's foot from now on, I'll be doing probably that way. Um, doesn't mean I'm changing every handle I do uh, to do that, to incorporate that. But uh, yeah, I think I'll end it there. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps, uh, especially new makers. Um, it's funny discussions about long watching long videos. I know people don't like long videos, I guess. Uh, but I know there's one or two people out there that are going to watch the whole thing and maybe learn something. So I'll continue putting these out. Mostly, I think, on the YouTube side versus the Instagram. You can check out both, stumptownaxes.com for t-shirts. Uh, also going to have axe oil on there um, and other merchandise. Uh, should have some hats and stuff soon. Instagram is stumptownaxes, at stumptownaxes. And uh, I think the YouTube channel doesn't have a name yet because I don't have whatever minimum uh, subscribers, whatever. I don't really give a shit about that. Um, I'm just going to keep on putting stuff out. And if people like it, great. If not, oh well. Um, yeah. All right. Go make it.